The YouTube algorithm is possibly the simplest deep learning neural network used today. It is extremely powerful and a major success in the world of big data. Why would I call this simple when it seems to be far from that? Well, if you compare it to other wow. neural networks, it really is the simplest computation possible. With all this talk about AI, machine learning, and debating whether or not your own computer is smarter than you, mine definitely is already, but my brain sets a low bar. Let's establish what all these terms actually mean before we jump into this video. Let's start with artificial intelligence. AI is the science dedicated to making machine act and think like humans. To make our lives just a bit easier, AI can range from anything for being like Trevor and GTA, Two girls, one creepy old man, all the way to a deep learning neural network. But then what's the difference between deep learning and machine learning? Machine learning is a general phrase for when computers learn from data, usually using an algorithm with the main purpose of autonomously performing tasks. Deep learning is a subset of this, which uses artificial neural networks so that the computer can make intelligent decisions on its own. So what the hell is a neural network? Are computer and data scientists all of a sudden neurosurgeons? Neural networks are simply just inspired by biological neural networks, which is where it's got its name. There are two types of learning, unsupervised and supervised. Supervision corresponds to a human and whether or not there's human interaction to the algorithm or not. Unsupervised learning has an input of a data set, but with no specific output, just clusters and associations, where supervised networks provide a very specific output. From this simple explanation, I'm sure you could put two and two together what the YouTube algorithm actually is. Of course, it's the supervised learning algorithm, where unsupervised algorithms are typically usually pretty complicated, they're fully autonomous, and are amazing for statistical and scientific studies, not necessarily for big data at a massive scale like YouTube or any user-friendly tech really. In neural networks, we have neurons, synapses, weights, and biases. Not to be philosophical or anything, but with how simple all this is, I feel like this was all modeled after my idiot ex-boyfriend's brain. Anyway, a neuron gets an input and then an activation function, which usually outputs one or zero, whether it's active or not. And then finally, an output correlated to a weight and bias set beforehand. Now take a quick look at all these activation functions, and then tell me which one is the most simple looking to you. Go ahead. I bet you chose Relu. Father, when can I leave to be on my own? I've got the whole world to see. Or R E L U Re whatever. The rectified linear unit. And you can bet your mama that the YouTube algorithm means that one. Now I'm about to get all fancy on you. The actual brains behind the YouTube algorithm is called a softmax classifier with candidate sampling. Yes, I am still speaking English. Now let's take that sentence and start with the first two word phrase or bigram a softmax classifier. All this does is it takes a list of real data then assigns a probability to each piece of data. From here, depending on what the neural network is told, it will pick a probability best suited for the situation. The softmax classifier has two ways of doing this. There's one option called full softmax, which calculates a probability for every single class. And in the context of the YouTube algorithm, when I say class, I'm actually referring to video. Now, if we were looking at 10 videos at a time, this would be incredibly cheap and effective to do. However, we're not looking at 10 videos, we're looking at billions of videos. This just simply is impossible for big data. So what's our other option? Candidate sampling. The next bigram. We are analyzing the sentence softmax classifier are using candidate sampling, just how computers analyze sentences, breaking it up into bigrams and unigrams. With candidate sampling, we would calculate the probability for all the positive labels, but only for a random set of negative labels. More clearly, if we use a neural network to figure out if an image is a horse or not, we don't necessarily need that entire data set of images to help the neural network figure this out. Instead, we can take a smaller class of images of non-horses, so in my example, data sets of birds, cats, dogs, and get a very similar result, but instead millions of less computations. So how can we apply this to the YouTube algorithm? If we have billions of YouTube videos and we use a user's profile as the positive label, we can then sample only a portion of the massive database of videos and check for the probabilities of these videos in this subclass. From this point, we have deduced our database of billions of videos down to hundreds of videos. It's still tough, but we have a lot more wiggle room in figuring this out now. This is the part where the neural network determines the quality of videos or attempts to do this. 
It looks at the watch time of every video, the age of each video, impression click-through rate, and then even a modeled expected watch time, which has its own neural network. After determining quality of the pool of the hundreds of videos, it will rank each video and then follow a similar architecture as the candidate generation. From here, the badly ranked videos are thrown out, and then we finally Wait. reach our serving stage. All of these millions of computations happen every single time you log into YouTube, refresh the page, or search for something. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. Even just leaving an impression on a video, which is when you stop scrolling and then just glance at a YouTube video on the front page, adds to and restarts a neural network. So is the YouTube algorithm really simple, like I said before? It is but it isn't at the same time. Let's say I'm a user that loves to watch Amber Lynn Reed, Trisha Paytas, and Korn music videos. This actually isn't an analogy. I just exposed my actual user history. Moving on. <laughs> now, what if an advantageous YouTuber posts a compilation of Amber Lynn Reed, Trisha Paytas, crying on the kitchen floor to the sound of Freak on a Leaf, or even Twist by Korn. <laughs> My profile for my personal user account on YouTube would go insane. All ones, no zeros. I just created the perfect YouTube video for myself. Imagine if YouTube had a very small data set of just 10 users. It would nail my YouTube recommendations perfectly. But this is where we run into the biggest Achilles heel of computer science, scalability. The math can crank out the perfect numbers. The system design can produce the results all so perfectly. But what about when those 10 users I just said become millions of users? Billions of users. It's a different story. Applying neural networks to big data is incredibly difficult. Not only because of the scalability, but also just straight up the lack of power a digital computer has to support these neural networks. This is why the YouTube algorithm is actually really simple. Too many computations per Billions of videos and users would actually break the internet. Especially since it's a search engine of its own. By using data that already exists and doing a very simple interpretation per user via truncating to one or zero, the YouTube algorithm makes the user have a much easier experience. ChatGPT uses 570 gigabytes of data in order to operate. I just want you to guess how much data the YouTube algorithm actually uses. It's actually not an exact answer. However, it is in exabytes. And if you don't know what that is, it's not a gigabyte, it's billions of gigabytes. That is how much data it needs to handle. Imagine if YouTube didn't have an algorithm at all, and it was just a giant pool of billions of videos. Even though it isn't perfect and sometimes produces some weird recommendations, it has definitely come a long way since the dawn of the internet.